animal keeper Roxy Lemus looks after what are known as problem jaguars at the Belize Zoo. These are jaguars that have had too much contact with humans, and they've begun hunting domestic animals like dogs and chickens. Homer, come here. Homer, come here, buddy. The zoo takes in the big cats to save them from being shot. They know Roxy well, but today they're acting unusually shy. Doesn't like the mask. Homer, come here, boy. The mask is there to prevent the jaguars from being infected with the coronavirus. Several tigers in a U.S. zoo tested positive for COVID-19. Good. At first, they don't recognize you with the mask on. So it's something that we both had to get adapted to, like we wearing the mask and them getting used to seeing us with masks. The coronavirus has Belize on lockdown, which has also meant shuttering the zoo. And it has to remain closed until restrictions are lifted. The Belize Zoo and Tropical Education Center is a non-profit organization. It only keeps indigenous animals. Most are rescues or unable to survive in the wild for any number of reasons. COVID-19 and the virus, it did not only affect the income for the zoo, but also the keepers that work here because um, we, we had to make that decision of, you know, cutting down on the days for staff. This bright red macaw called Ranger can no longer fly. He's the latest addition to the zoo and probably the only one who thinks humans wearing masks look normal. Who's that jaguar? <gasps> Who is that? Sharon Matola founded the zoo almost 40 years ago. It's never been so deserted. The animals have no idea what's going on, which is fun. But we're affected because one of the greatest challenges is keeping everyone fed and healthy. So, bless the Belizeans, man. They've been giving us pig heads, which you see you know, the jaguars love. Meat distributors from around the region have donated their scraps, something the wild cats find delicious. We've been able to garner food supplies, enough to keep us going until we can get on our footing again. A new donation has just arrived, sugar cane and a big pile of leaves. This tapir can eat up to 30 kilos of vegetation a day. So far, Belize has come through the coronavirus crisis relatively unscathed. It's now mid-May, and there have not been any known new infections for weeks. The country's economy, though, is suffering badly without tourists from abroad. The sector generates half the gross domestic product here, so the virus knocked out 50% of the country's economy overnight. Many non-governmental organizations depend on tourism. Nikki Buxton heads Belize Bird Rescue. Originally from the UK, she's worked every day for 16 years to protect the country's native bird species. She finances her project with her small hospitality business. A small bed and breakfast with like nine units. So we would take in tourists, interns, uh, vet students, people like that, who would be obviously fee paying, which uh, and any profit whatsoever would go into the birds. At her rescue and rehabilitation center, Nikki Buxton looks after almost 200 birds. The ultimate goal is to release them back into the wild. That applies to the baby owls as well as the large waterfowl. Oh, yeah, I do love pallies. <laughs> Here, the distressed birds are nursed back to health, reared, and then, if possible, set free. We've had everything from the biggest jabberoo stalk down to the teeny hummingbird. Since the pandemic began, Nikki's been working with a smaller team than usual. Her husband, Jerry, and co-worker, Oscar, are both here to lend a helping hand. And there's also Jujubee, the yellow-headed Amazon parrot. 
She's actually a forest department confiscation. She was in a cage with no perching and her feet are really crippled. Yellow-headed Amazons are highly endangered, Jerry tells us. This is probably one of Belize's uh, most threatened animals. There are now only 1,200 of these left, and once those 1,200 are gone, the bird will be extinct. Um, they hope that the poaching would decrease this year, but actually, in fact, during the lockdown, they see that several of the nests that had chicks in have already been poached. Nikki Buxton collects the chicks from the nests threatened by poaching to raise them in safety. The cutest thing. The freshly hatched yellow-headed Amazon parrots need to be fed every four hours. Being a surrogate mother is a long-term task. The parrots will be looked after for a total of 12 months. Then they'll be big enough to be released. <laughs> Over the past 16 years, Belize Bird Rescue has released 750 parrots into the wild. But how will the group finance itself in the coronavirus era? I honestly don't know. I, I can't see that the tourism industry is going to bounce back anytime soon. So it might be that we need to shift our focus and concentrate on fundraising, grant seeking and uh, find ways to cut costs as best as we can. We're determined to keep going, though. It's unclear how Belize will fare once the COVID-19 pandemic has passed, but should the economy and the situation for people in the country get worse, it's feared that poaching will become an even bigger problem, and that will make it all the more difficult for environmental and animal protection organizations to do their work. This guy's very bitey. <laughs>